Hello everyone, my name is David with Let's Talk Theology. I'm very happy to be here with you. I'm glad that you decided to stop by and join us and be a part of this community of students. So sit back, relax. We have a wonderful uh, video we want to present for you and present to you today uh, concerning some things that I think will help you in your studies and with your purpose in the kingdom of God. So sit back, relax, and again, welcome to Let's Talk Theology. everyone welcome back again my name is David with Let's Talk Theology I'm happy that you decided to join us in this video and today we're going to be talking about something that is very important very practical but nevertheless very important uh, I'm quite sure that most people in the kingdom of God and a lot of people uh, actually uh, struggle with anxiety struggle with uh, their purpose in Christ struggle with doing actually what God is calling you to do and I think it is always appropriate and always helpful and inspiring to motivate one another uh, to get out there and step out on faith, stretch out and do exactly what God has called you to do. Well, sometimes that's a little easier said than done, and that is very understandable. Sometimes we hesitate at doing what we know God has told us to do because we fear what others may think. We fear what what we may do and how we may do it. We fear uh, what failures we may bring upon ourselves. Uh, there's all types of reasons for us uh, being a little hazardous or a little afraid, I think is a better word, to get out there and just do what God told us to do. Well, we're not alone in this, okay? We're not alone. People throughout the Bible have struggled with this many times. And today we want to look at a guy by the name of Moses. Moses was one of the most dominant figures of the Old Testament. In fact, he's one of the most famous and one of the most authoritative figures of the Old Testament, simply because he was the revealer of God's wisdom and God's law. Many times, Moses is accredited with being that great, great man who cannot be overstepped and cannot be overlooked. Uh, and that was part of the problem with uh, the first century Jews that experienced the coming of Jesus Christ. They were so attached and so focused on what Moses had given them that they felt no one could ever outdo him or ever overstep him or ever be in, in, in a way uh, at any more authoritative than he was. Well, a guy like that, a guy that was so dominant, so popular and so influential, believe it or not, had low self-esteem. All right, it's amazing. That's why I love this book called the Book of Exodus because it is very practical. But I just am I'm amazed at how down to earth these uh, narratives and these stories were. And I found found out that when we embrace it like that, embrace it as the down to earth narrative that it really is, we find that the gospel of Jesus Christ actually comes uh, to help us and to walk us through those difficulties those personal difficulties that may prevent us from being uh, all that God wants us to be, all right? So here it is. Moses is being called out to go and to uh, uh, approach Pharaoh, and he is absolutely terrified. He tells God that he is not qualified. He cannot do this. Choose someone else. And he is really, uh, I mean, he is really intimidated by the, the calling, by being chosen. He, he, he says something that I think I can relate to, uh, relate with, and it's just my personal thing. Um, you have your own thing, but I, I, this is me, all right? He says this in verse number 10 of chapter 4 of the book of Exodus. He says, Lord, I'm not very good with words. I've never been, and I'm not now. He says, man, look, I, I have never had an easy job or easy way of relaying words or expressing how I feel or getting my words out. But yet you want me to be the spokesman for you. You want me to go to the most authoritative guy in the world and speak on your behalf. Do you know what what great of a fool I'll make myself out to be? How could you ask me to do this? There's someone else better qualified than me. And truth be told, if you ever look at what God tells you to do, of course there's someone more qualified than you. That's the point of it all. God does not choose you based on your qualifications. He chooses you based on your humility your soberness and your willingness to move yourself out of the way so that he can step in and do what he needs to do in you and through you and by doing that God gets the glory 
and you are used to fulfill your God-given purpose. But look at what Moses goes on to say. He says, I've never been good with words. I'm not now. And even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied. He says, even though you have come into my life and you've called me to do this, I still have this problem. And this is what we want to, want to pay attention to. He says, my words get tangled up. I can't get my, my delivery out like I want to. Uh, this is the, the myth about being called and about being chosen by God. The myth is that whenever God chooses you and operates through you, all of your imperfections go away. That's what we think. We think that if I'm chosen by God and if God is operating through me, everything that, about me that is imperfect disappears. And that's not necessarily true because Moses says, even though you have come to me, I still have the same problem that I had before you ever came to me. He says, so how can I be and do what you want me to do? And God gets frustrated because God asks him a very important question. He says, who makes a person's mouth? Who made your mouth? Who gave you the words? Who gives you the ability to speak? The fact of the matter is this, brothers and sisters, you may have the same imperfections and the difficulties and the lack of a mannerism that you would like to have to fulfill the job that God has called you to feel, fulfill. You may not have the qualifications, you may not have the ability, you may not have the strength, you may not have the durability, you may be weak, vulnerable, you may be uh, lack, lacking the, the intellectualism or the, uh, the, uh, the influence that you would like to have. But the fact of the matter is this, when God calls you to do something, he calls you the way you are and he uses you as you are to literally bring forth his glory and to represent his will to the earth. He allows you to operate as you are. That's the beautiful thing about it. So we are not get so tangled up in how unqualified we are or how much we lack of, of what we think we should be doing in God's kingdom. No, the, the right way to embrace it is to humble yourself in such a way that God is in complete control and so that whenever you get out there and you do whatever it is that God has called you to do, then God gets glory and you, you, you remain in the right position for you to be blessed and for you to be literally a part of God's work in the earth. I know that's hard. That's, that's hard. That's hard to do. It's easier to just be what everybody wants you to be, right? It's easier for you to get out there and say all the right things and be all the right things and do all the right things. But sometimes that's not that's not going to cut it. But if you really want to get out there and you really want to be a part of God's plan, you have to detach yourself from your own agenda, attach yourself from your own will, allow God to use you as you are, and I promise you, you will be more effective than you ever thought you could be. Uh, the point of this whole video is to let you know, man, look, we all got work to do. We're in a world that is flipping back and forth. It is flipping upside down. Things are just, fall the bottom is falling out. It's time for us to stand up. Whatever it is that God has called you to do, do it. You don't need a stage. You don't need people. You don't need people's opinion, people's approval. All you need is God's God-given right and authority to do whatever it is that he has purposed for you to do. And watch God bless you and bless others around you because of your obedience. My time is up. I just wanted to inspire someone. I just felt like getting that off my chest. I feel a whole lot better. And I hope I've been able to inspire you a little bit. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of this YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Please hit like. Comment, share, and let other people, other people know what we're doing here at Let's Talk Theology to build a community of people that will take biblical studies and theological discussions seriously. Again, thank you for watching. Until next time, God bless.